it's Helen Godden, all the way from Australia. I'm the Handy Quarter Ambassador and I just love my Sweet 16. We're going to be doing some episodes called Short and Sweet. And today I'm going to show you all about spirals and have a bit of a spiral challenge. So if we have a look here on the drawing pad, all spirals are based on the way that we write the number six. So I'm hoping everyone knows how to make a six. So a six is that basic curving shape around the outside of a circle that comes in and touches onto itself, usually just there on the side. But for a spiral, we're going to make that outside circle and come into the middle like a snail's shell. And then at some stage, decide that we're going to come on out again and you're going halfway in between those lines you've already drawn and coming out of your spiral. But the spiral doesn't finish there. Some people will now come across here with a straight line and start the next spiral and that's when you end up with quite an odd area in amongst your spiral work. So what you need to do is make that spiral and as you come out keep going around the outside of that spiral, keep travelling around the outside of that line and you're looking ahead the whole time for a space for the next spiral to fit. And when you come to that space, another six. Okay, when you come out of that one keep coming around. Now you might get carried away and go all the way into this little spot in here and realise that's a dead end. You can't go anywhere from there. So then travel back out, echoing what you've already done and now looking ahead again of where that next spiral might fit. And it can be any time now. It's still based on number six. It's a backwards number six, but it's still a six. And then we come out again, around the outside of it, Looking ahead, and there's a nice big space here. We'll come into that spiral. And then sometimes echo. Okay, so that's the basics of spirals. I'm going to demonstrate that for you on the sandwich here, on the quilt sandwich. And then I'm going to show you a whole heap of um, varieties of spirals. But all of them are based on that idea of a number six. So that's something that you need to practice on paper. So I'm going to show you some spirals that I've already prepared on this one here. We can see some um, very round spirals here and then later on I'll be showing you these ones which I call abstract spirals. They have um, sort of a straight line in between each area but it's still based on number six. And then as we go on I'm going to show you these ones which I call steampunk spirals. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit tricky but we can work our way through those. So we'll start off with the round spirals up here. So I'm going to needle down, needle up and bring up that bottom thread so that I'm ready to start. And we're going to make that first number six. So you can see that's a six shape. If I just cut away that thread, that's not in the way there. You can see that number six and I'm coming into the middle. Then I can even stop there for a little pause and have a little think about where I'm going next. And now I'm going to make my way out. Again, you can pause in that middle spot, but you can see how I came around the outside of that spiral and then started on my next six. So same again. This is where you come to that dead end and realise that you need to go somewhere else. So we'll just echo back around our previous spiral, trying to keep that um, distance consistent so that you get that consistent width happening. Now you can use the width of your foot if you'd like, because you know that it's a quarter inch from the needle to the side of the foot, but otherwise I just really just eyeball it and just work out where I'm going next. So you can see there, I just came along and then echoed around that previous spiral. So they're nice um, 
I won't say the word perfect, but they're trying to be very round spirals. So now what happens if we have some uh, variations on that? So if we've got this lovely round spiral, okay, so we're going to get that spiral and, yeah, give it a bit of a squash. So what happens is it sort of uh, pancakes out the sides and we start to get more of an oval shape. So we'll do that with this spiral. I'll finish this one and we'll start the next one. So my number six now is going to be more of an oval shaped six. So you can still see that's a number six, but it's now a squashed number six. So you can see the oval ones start to look rather interesting and you can make them fit into each other because they're all slightly different shapes. But what if we actually really exaggerated that horizontalness of it? Let's see if we can make a pond spiral. So this is as if you are looking down over the side of a bridge and seeing the ripples of water um, off the side of a pond. There we go. I'm not sure you can see that on the camera. Should I change the angle of that one? But we've got the little pond there with a duck, <laughs> okay? So with that one, I've really exaggerated out the ends here, and it's very horizontal through here and very curved out the end, and that way you get that um, sort of the idea of the water glistening on a pond. Let's take that same idea and create wood grain. It's still a spiral, but it's going to look like wood grain, so it's going to look like a tabletop or a trunk of a tree with a wood grain pattern. I'm going to turn my quilt this way. I like to work the wood grain in a more vertical direction like this. And it's going to have that same number six, but with a little uh, point at the bottom of it, okay? If you can see that's like a six but it's got sort of a point at each end and to make a point you just pause your hands. If you keep your hands moving smoothly in a flowing motion the whole time you're going to have lovely curved lines and that's what we do for stippling or for very round spirals etc. But if you want there to be a sharp point in your design that's when you pause your hands. So in that split second the needle goes up and down a couple of times and gives you that exact change of direction. So sometimes you'll want to pause your hands to get that sharp and sometimes you don't. But in this one we do. So hopefully with that one you can see that with the um, spirals they're making like the knots 
or the, you know, in the grain of wood, and then you've got the parallel lines to give that effect. The next one we might try is what I call abstract spirals. We did show that one in the sample before. You might have a look at that again. So with abstract spirals, it's still based on number six, but all the movements we make are straight lines that all come together to make um, what I call a wonky spiral. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. So it's still a number six, but we're going to create that six as a series of little straight lines. So you can sort of see my six shape there. Now I haven't drawn that as a perfect square, I've made it a, a badly drawn square, a poorly drawn square. If you were to make your abstract spirals all perfectly square, once you've done one, the only option for the next spiral is to be exactly the same again. So by making them uh, five sided squares, so a badly drawn square, they can ultimately fit together in any arrangement. So you can see in this example, as I came out of that spiral, I kept travelling around the outside of it. So staying close to the boundary of that spiral shape, echoing the previous shapes until I found a nice space to work into. Sometimes I'll just travel or echo down the side of those spirals because I'm getting too far um, advanced in my quilt and I'm feeling like I've really missed a whole area down here that I want to fill in. So I will just echo back down, trying to still keep that quarter inch pretty consistent and have the pattern just continue. So that echo just looks like it was part of the plan right from the start. One of the really fun things about spirals too is the fact that it is a continuous line. Um, it means that, for instance, in a lot of my art quilts, I'll sometimes work back into my quilting and I'll paint back into the design. And so if I paint back into that pathway, I'll be able to find a positive and a negative of that design. And it always works because it is actually a continuous line. So even if I got my marker, which is here, if I started to effectively colour that in, just for an example, you can see that it's going to give me that positive and negative. It will always work. And so why I do that in some of my art quilts is that I feel one of my greatest strengths is my quilting. So I really want to show that off basically. And when I'm stitching with a thread, it's only a very fine thread. It's only I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch, a thirty-tooth of an inch or something very small, so it's not giving much impact. So if I can then colour in that width, that quarter inch width, it's now really showing off my quilted design. So you can either paint back into that or use a marker or something. You can even do a little fine stipple or a little pattern back into that as an extra micro quilting fill, um, which would be pretty, pretty impressive if you did that to show off that positive and negative. And that's something that you would do on a fairly plain fabric like this. You wouldn't waste your effort on a really busy um, floral print or something where the design's not going to show up. So I've shown you quite a few different spirals there. Now I'm going to show you one that's really going to test your skills. This one I called Steampunk, and it's a little bit like a set of um, cogs on a machine or something like that. Uh, it can be quite a masculine design as well. It looks quite good, but it's still a spiral. So let's have a look. So 
So I've just come in with my normal number six spiral, but now on the way out is when I change my stitch and add something a bit special. So this is the little steampunk. These are little uh, square shapes, like little turrets. So the tricky thing here is to imagine that there's a, a little spot in the middle and that these shapes are all radiating out from an imaginary spot. They have to all sort of come off the side in that radiating pattern. So I've stitched in with what I call a plain stitch and I've come out with a fancy stitch. So as I'm coming around here... I might launch into my next spiral by coming just parallel to the previous one and then creating my next six. So there's my six and now I'm going to do my steampunk again. I think that's a bit of a challenge for you. How many different designs can you come up with to um, get good variety with your spirals? Good luck with that one and I'll see you real soon. Mm -hmm.